I'm with Brian Graycon of Brian Graycon and Associates. How are you, Brian? I'm doing very well. Thanks, Dave. Brian, you are in the training business. We've talked on this program a great deal about millennials, how consumers are changing by virtue of having millennials join more and more the, the bank mm -hmm. of consumers out there. One thing that we've never really talked about is approaching. How do we sell them? How do we market to millennials? Um, it's a whole new way of looking at things. Right, marketing and then staff development to better serve millennials as well. The millennials group is the largest of the three groups. If you think boomers, Gen X, and millennials, the millennials are the largest group. We need to be paying attention, and probably most of your viewers uh, are paying attention to that. They've gotten the message, this is important, but what do you do? And that's where somebody from a training and a marketing perspective might come to that issue. I've done some research recently that shed some interesting light about millennials, and then we'll use this information to talk about marketing and training and, and staff development. And to make sure I get the sources right and the numbers right, I want to refer to a few notes. There's an outfit called Inmar that does a shopper behavior study. And they confirm what we all know, that millennials do a lot more research online than anybody else. Uh, their estimate was 15% more. I suspect it's a lot more than that before they ever consider coming to your store to buy your product. Accenture, a well-respected international consulting company, did a recent study on millennials. And they said millennials do 40% more online review research than anybody else. You know, what did somebody say about this product? What did somebody say about this dealer, that salesperson? 40% more. They did something very interesting uh, to me. They started breaking the millennials group down. You know, there's 83 million millennials. Well, they're not all the same. They're starting to talk about older millennials versus younger millennials. And older millennials, in their view, were people 23 to 27 years old. And they say the older millennials do 50% more email than younger millennials. So as you think about people texting and instant messaging and Twitter and, and so forth, uh, it's an increasing wave. As people get younger, they're getting more familiar and using that technology more. And, and we know technology is very important to the millennials, and they use it extensively. That doesn't necessarily mean they're happy with it, which I found fascinating. Uh, USA Today reported a recent research study conducted by Intel. Intel makes chips. They know computers. They know tablets. And there were a couple of fascinating things. That study said 61% of young adults think technology is dehumanizing. They are the group least enthusiastic about technology. And that makes you wonder, what's going on? Their interpretation is that the millennials may be the people who use it the most, but are most frustrated by it. You and I, Dave, we probably look at technology and a smartphone and say, wow, look at all the things it can do. The millennials seem to look at it and say, look at all the things it can't do yet. Or look how difficult those things are to do. I want it to be easier. They're frustrated, not real happy with technology, but they're using a ton of it, and, and they're driving it. And given that they're the largest group, we need to be paying attention to millennials coming into the marketplace. Another part of that Intel research was that the more people use social media, the least happy they seem to be. And that struck me as strange, too. Again, what's their interpretation? Well, if you're active in social media, that's a lot of pressure. You put something out there and nobody likes it. What's that say about you? Or you put something out there and a lot of people like it, now they expect more of that. You know, there's an old adage, you do good work, be careful, people expect more of it. Same thing applies with social media. There's a lot of pressure. Uh, what if you're not as cool as all your friends on social media, right? Do you feel inferior, insecure, issues of cyberbullying, all that kind of stuff? So it's a very complex world when you talk about millennials and technology, which brings us to marketing and selling to millennials. What are you going to do about that? I'm going to use as a framework a marketing strategy that I call Meconomics. Meconomics is marketing and selling based on recent shifts in consumer buying habits. My analysis of the reasons that some businesses were recession-proof through the last five or seven years is they were able to focus on three reasons why people really want to buy products or services. One, it enhanced their self-image. Can you think tattoo parlors or cosmetics? They didn't see a recession. Two, they want to pamper themselves. Think luxury automobiles. Think spas and nail salons. Or three, they want to be entertained. Think amusement parks think the rise of uh, personal entertainment services like Pandora and Netflix, they want to be entertained. Those three reasons, self-image, pamper, and entertain, 
are at the heart of what I call economics. Now let's apply that to millennials and how we market to millennials. When you think about the self-image, that's what Facebook and Twitter can be about to the millennials. This is who they are and they tell the world. One of the fascinating bits of research from Pew Research is that 54% of millennials say they've interacted with somebody online who misrepresented themselves. That's a strong statement, I think, that self-image is very important, even to the point where I will lie about myself online. It's harder for me to lie about myself face-to-face, -face, but I'll lie about myself online because I have a better self-image of myself, even though it's not true. Fascinating kind of stuff. Well, self-image is important to them, so think about your self-image, your image that you're conveying to millennials in your store. Are you hiring millennials, first of all? Oh, they just want to play on the computer and so forth. That's a life skill. That's a communication skill with millennials. You're worried about it. They have it. And it's probably not something you have on your staff. Uh, do you have computers or tablets in your store that your salespeople use with the millennial customer? Have you been to an AT&T store, Dave? You may have noticed they're selling phones, they're selling tablets, and they're selling them using tablets. Every person in that store, when they greet you, has a tablet either attached or in their hand. And they have a conversation with you, and they look things up, and you have a question about the warranty. They could tell you, but they've been trained to go to the tablet. Why? Because they're selling tablets and smartphones. So it makes sense that they're using them. And if you're a millennial coming into a phone store, you expect the salespeople to be technically savvy and sell to you that way. Mm -hmm. Do you have that in your store? Classically, we'd say, I want computers in my store. My salespeople are just going to spend all day and going places they shouldn't on the Internet or playing games. Well, maybe we need to change how we think about them and think of them as important selling tools, especially to millennials. That's self-image and the image you project of your store. About a third of millennials say it's very important in their job decisions when they decide where to go to work, what kind of technology is available to them. It's coming. And if we want to sell it to millennials, maybe we should be able to sell it to millennials. The second topic is pamper in this list of economics, uh, spas and luxury automobiles and so forth. How does that relate to millennials? Well, they want to be treated the way they want to be treated. That's pampering somebody. Uh, if you like massages, you want to go somewhere where maybe they give you a spa certificate as a, an incentive for the sale, not just 5% off. So do you hire people who know how to pamper millennials? Do you go to jewelry stores or AT&T or a salon to hire people who can relate well to millennials? Do you have people on your staff with unusually colored hair that looks a little strange to you, but looks perfectly normal to a millennial? Maybe part of your staff should be that way. Do your salespeople, when a customer is leaving, particularly a millennial, say, instead of, can I call you in a few days to see if you've made your decision, say, how about I text you in a few days? Here's my Twitter handle. Heck, call me, hashtag this, check with me, I'll see if there's anything new and I'll be in touch. How are you communicating? What kind of incentives are you giving? Are they incentives that pamper the millennial? Right. Are you giving incentives that are 5% off or we're giving you a floral bouquet? Or are you giving Amazon gift cards? Are you giving uh, AT&T gift cards? Are you telling people, I'll pay your data plan for three months if you buy a room of flooring from me? Now you have incentives that pamper and speak to the lifestyle of the millennials, perhaps more than the incentives we've been giving. Uh, buy two rooms and I'll give you a kayak. Whatever it is that matters to the millennials, that's what we should be thinking about as part of our package, at least, of incentives. Might the uh, boomer be interested in a kayak? Maybe not. But can it be available as one of the bags, one of the things in your bag of tricks to a millennial? Absolutely. And third is entertaining, the third lens in economics. How do millennials like to be entertained? Well, can you say data plans, download movies, download music? And to some degree, Facebook and Twitter are also there as entertainment. I have to stay in touch. Right? Those are ways that millennials are entertaining themselves. So again, what are we doing in terms of making the shopping experience fun? Maybe we're using computers and tablets to communicate. Or the incentives, and I've mentioned several recently, from kayaks to data plans. Whatever it is you think will speak to millennials, those are things we can put into the package of how we do business, market and sell to millennials.